It's Authors Reveal, and I'm Becky Anderson. I'm thrilled. On the launch day, we have two authors who have collaborated on this fantastic fantasy series that will have you laughing your head off. It's called Kill the Farm Boy, which is book number one, and number two, No Country for Old Gnomes. You've got to read this one. Kevin and Delilah, it's great to have you here. Thank you so much. We're we, so glad to be here. Well, this is so, we're honored and we're thrilled because this is the launch day <laughs> for the second book in the Tales of Pell, No Country for Old Gnomes. I love your titles. I just love them. This one's all Kevin. <laughs> <Is> the, <it>? <laughs> yep, <laughs> this one's all Kevin. Yeah. Th this particular one was, yeah. Not, not the others, but, th but this one, yeah. No, this Kill one? the Farm Boy was. You did the Princess Beard. That's right. We we well, we basically lost right. track of who's done what at this point, yeah. which is kind of what you want. Yeah, you definitely want that because yeah. you're becoming one. Yes. Yeah, I think that is so cool. So um, so this book is number two of the Tales of Pell series. So um, I know you guys have published many books before, and this but these these two books are your first collaborations that you've worked on with any other author, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So I just want to know, what, what is that experience like? And you guys must have more fun than we do have reading them. I, I, I have to believe that, right? Yeah, you betcha. You yeah. want to go over? Oh, yeah. Oh, sure. Um, um, it's like this. It's like, yeah. do you want to go? No, no, you go. It's okay. It's so <laughs> yeah, it's, right, right. We're, we're basically the gnomes in the book, and we're just super happy to be here. Yeah. <laughs> but no, um, it was, it was Kevin had the idea for the book, and we built the characters and took turns writing them, and everything's kind of shared. Nobody was like, that's my precious baby. We're right, like, we'll take sure. all the babies, and it's just the most fun, collaborative, hilarious, punny. Like, when we send each other chapters, it's like opening yeah. your Christmas present to see what's there. Yeah. And we, and we basically put these together in little brainstorming sessions in different cities. This particular book, No Country for Old Gnomes, uh -huh. was uh, brainstormed or and kind of outlined uh, on Frenchman Street in New Orleans. Nice we place went, to do it. Yeah, we went from <laughs> I'd bar to bar. I've never been before. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, we, it, and every bar has a different music scene and a different sort of flavor to it. And so that wound up inspiring different parts of the book. Or even characters, probably, right? It, it, yeah. Well, indeed. Yeah. Our hotel had a griffin as, the, <laughs> like, its its logo. And and I looked at the hotel key card and I said, we should have a griffin in our book. A griffin who it's loves... It's on the cover! Who loves yeah. fluffy eggs. Yes! <laughs> yeah, so so that's... It, yeah. it, where we Wherever we brainstormed, yeah. it was uh, greatly influential to yeah. the outcome of the story. Yeah. So you've both published individually many books before. And you know, there's always that launch day when you know that book's going to be officially out in the world. It's going to be in a lot of places. So, how does this feel now that this is number two in your collaboration? But is it still sort of anticipation, a little nervousness when that book is finally out in the world? Do you feel that way? I I um I don't Google myself anymore because I'm terrified. <laughs> I'm like, what if they don't like it? But I'm like, if I just ignore <laughs> it, it'll be fine and they'll like yeah. it. And, and 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 people seem to be digging it. I saw some stuff pop up today and. Um, our fans are just the kindest, nicest yeah. people, and they're so enthusiastic. So we just really hope that they're happy and that they enjoy it. Yeah, yeah we've had the, the most wonderful time uh, hearing from people who've enjoyed the first book, and then there have been a few like early reviews, people who've taken an early peek yeah. and have been laughing over some of the stuff that we've done, and we're like, yes, we like that part too. <laughs> so it, it's been great. You That's can read, um, the audiobook is especially good. It's read by Luke Daniels, and he does all the voices. And you can read, yeah. you can like listen to the little excerpt of the first scene, which is a play on Macbeth's Three Witches. And like I, I, you know, we've we've written it and we've each edited it twenty times, but still yeah. listening to that, I was giggling like I was five. Yeah. yeah. I, I, you know what these books they do? They make you. They are butt gusters. Uh, gut busters, I'm saying. <laughs> butt gusters. But, 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 but gusters. But gut we gotta busters. Use, that's amazing. But both. They butt bust. gusters is like a new thing. <laughs> oh, right. I, I, I love that, it. I've I actually never really book. thought about it that way. That's weather. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but they are. Th these books are a joy to read. Yeah. Because you get all the references towards everything, but they are, you guys put so much into them, and it doesn't matter how corny the joke or how puns used to drive me crazy because my grandfather was a punster to the max. <laughs> but your puns, everything you put into them are so clever, 
but but yet you have such great stories and and sort of those page turning sort of adventures that happen in the book so it's it's the best of all worlds yeah. thank you so much thank you so you know star wars celebration star wars is celebration the, is the last day at mccormick place at chicago today and i know you were there all five days i was so both of you have written star wars books um so so what do you think about the the new one that's coming out number nine and they just gave it the title with the big surprise reveal this past thursday so any any comments on anything talking about Skywalker? Well, you know, Star Wars <laughs> Celebration, I go to a lot of cons, and it's the, the most friendly, mm -hmm. uplifting, kind, sweet, family-friendly. Like, there's just, I guess it takes too much energy to go there and be negative. Everybody's kind, but uh, the the arena was filled, I think, six or 8,000 people for the Episode Nine reveal. So everybody crowded into the dealer hall where they had a live stage where they were right. projecting it. And I think we had, like, you know, maybe 10 seconds behind them. So, we, you know, they got it a little bit earlier, but we were watching it. Yeah. And just that feeling of like everybody, suddenly we were all related and we were all feeling the anticipation and you could hear the, cr the crowd going like, <gasps> ooh, oh, ooh, and then yeah. we'd start jumping up and down. And then there were lots of four letter words yeah. uttered, but it was amazing being a part of that even, yeah. you know, not even, it was like, it wasn't live, but we were watching it live together. It was incredible and people yeah. are, it's just, it means so much to us and being a part of it is, is a huge honor. Yeah. And I, you know, I felt this whole Star Wars world because we were we were the book vendor for the show, and we were near the stage there. And I'm standing there when all this is happening. There were people literally crying, oh, yeah. and it, but it just to me it just shows you, and it's it's so universal because there were so many people from other countries. It's such a diverse audience and these fans and. Um, th that would just made it so wonderful and I know that's what you put into these books too you have a quite a diverse group of characters those that are completely made up but you also add so many more elements to make your characters so diverse so do you put a lot of um, into these stories you know there's there's the stereotypes that you sort of blow away when it comes to fairy tales and fantasy but you put in so much more to make bring that reality to these characters even though they're outlandish but you bring sort of that reality of what happens to an individual so you can you speak a little bit about that because you do bring that to a lot of the characters and what they're going through um, well we really don't look at um, the diversity thing necessarily as uh, well, well, basically, it's just reflective of the world we're living right, in. Right. And, and so, yeah. uh, but we were seeing, uh, at least when you look at the history of fantasy and the, and the sort of body of work that's been out there for decades and decades, yeah, yeah. it's sort of the same sorts of uh, patterns, perhaps. Lots of variations in the details, but we, you, you notice the patterns. And yeah. so, uh, Kill the Farm Boy was uh, one of those things where we really wanted to bust that particular uh, trope sure. and mm -hmm. uh, mess with it, right. and, along with a whole bunch of other ones as well. And the yeah. same thing for No Country for Old Homes. We just... Uh, really liked uh, enjoy playing around with halflings uh, in organized crime <laughs> and uh, you know dwarves maybe being concerned with something besides what's underneath the ground but rather what's high up in the mountains above it so yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. We, we had a great time uh, playing around with all those things yeah. so with, with kill the farm boy where did, where did the seeds start to grow for that that story I mean tell us about what, how, when you guys first decided that, hey, let's, let's do a book together and do something completely different than what either one of us has written before. Yeah. Uh, we started. Uh, okay. okay, so yeah. we, were, we were in Dallas after a signing. We, we had been signing with uh, Charlene Harris, Jay Wells, and Rachel Kane in Dallas. And afterward, Delilah and I were in the Dallas airport eating really bad barbecue at 10 a.m. Sorry, Dallas. And, sorry, Dallas. Sounds, yeah, sounds well, like I mean, it's just airport barbecue. Yeah. It's not, you yeah. know. So, yeah. um, but I thought, you know, we, we were both jazzed after, you know, the event right, because sure. we were so inspired by all these other writers that we were with. And uh, we, we thought, well, why don't we do something trope busting as an anthology? Why don't we kill the farm boy? And the original idea was to have a bunch of different stories mm -hmm. where the farm boy keeps dying. But uh, I getting that all put together is a lot of work, getting a whole Please. bunch of different author schedules sure. to work. Yeah. So about, a, it was seriously like a year later, so I said, why don't we just write it ourselves? And yeah. then we only have to write half a book each because we're very lazy. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you guys Obviously. are so lazy. <laughs> So how do you do this? You know, when you're collaborating on the same story, um, how often do you get together in person? How often do you, you know, you pass, okay, how does this joke sound? And if you get a good laugh, does that work? And do you do, of course, you do it just emailing back and forth, I'm sure. But do you, do you outline it first, where you know where it's going? Or is it sort of writing where you're taking the reader at the same time you're going in that direction? So tell us, how does the collaboration work between the two of you? Yeah, so like like Kevin said, we love to story break uh, in a unique environment. So you know, we did a 
No Control Gnomes on Frenchman Street in Louisiana, um, and then The Princess Beard, which will be out in October. We did that one um, in Seattle, which was super fun. We yeah. discovered Spam Masubi, and we've never looked back. <laughs> um, so yeah, you can tell the piratical element plays into that one, but for Old yeah. Gnomes, it was it was Frenchman Street. Yeah. Um, but so we'll think about like you know the characters we want, and it's a lot like, ooh, you know it would be fun? Ooh, you know it would be fun? We try to kind of fit them together, and, and then we look at the tropes for you know each character right. and try to see ways to subvert it lovingly and how to make that character uh, you know a, a, a well-rounded individual with hopes and fears and strengths yeah, and right. flaws and and give the the you know we kind of do these dungeon crawl parties, but we want them to have reasons to push and pull each other. Like they don't all automatically get along. Um, we, one of our favorite characters is is a gnome, who's yeah. a main character. Um, yeah. And his name is Offie, and his twin brother is like the, the golden boy. And we're like, how do we make Offie different? Yeah. And we're like, oh, he's going to be goth. I love his cardigans. His yeah, cardigans so he has goth great. cardigans. He like embroiders <laughs> little like red-eyed bats in his cardigans. And all of the other gnomes are like cheerful and polished, and they like mm. sunflowers and pineapples. And he is like putting little black smudges under his eyes in the gnome bathroom. And yeah, we just but we love subverting the tropes lovingly. Yeah. And right. then once uh, we had the outline uh -huh. uh, kind of fixed up, we would trade chapters. And so Delilah would write a chapter, send it to me, I would edit, and then write okay. my chapter, send it to her. And then what you get is a hybrid voice. Right. So it's yeah, you I was ideally that. cannot mm -hmm. tell who wrote which chapter because yeah. it's really been both of us at some point. So yeah, and the, uh, the outlines too, we would kind of go back and forth, you know, where we would figure out mm -hmm. where it started, and then, you know, kind of the climax and the ending we were heading to, and then kind of do it, oh, and then this happens, oh, and then this happens, and then what if that happens? So yeah. we'd usually build up to like a 30 chapter outline, and usually grow to like 34 by the end. Yeah, yeah. And I love the titles in each chapter, they are so clever. And, and I know these books are great for even teens to read, you know, that, and great vocabulary for that age level. But we love big words. But, you know, just, just going through and reading the chapter heads is fun. You don't even have to read, but they're, they're absolutely so creative and so clever. They're wonderful. So I know you've written so many other books before. You sat down to collaborate on these two books, and then the third will be out this fall. But how did your previous writing, writing fantasy, writing Star Wars, whatever you were doing, how has that informed the writing of these books, which are, you know, I think Kirkus Review said it was a cross between take J.R.L. Tolkien's The Fellowship of the Ring and, and put it on laughing gas, and that's what you got, right? Which is a great Oh, review. man, I want to hear those orcs on laughing gas. Thank you, Mohammed! How did it inform it? Well, no, um, I'm just, yeah, because you, you had to have that basis in order to move forward with, with some of these, these, these characters and just doing the tropes on everything. Well, you're known for humor version. with Oberon. A little bit. So yeah. we kind of knew we wanted yeah. like a non-human being a hero yeah. in, in Kill the Farm Boy. So yeah, we had Gustav, uh, you know, kind of uh, walk on the stage there. Yeah. But also, I was writing at the time a very serious epic fantasy, uh, and, and I still am, uh, the Seven Kennings trilogy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, it, that is a lot of really sort of serious work for your, for your mind. And mm -hmm. I was kind of going nuts because I needed something to kind of lighten you know the load a little bit right. and uh, this was the perfect antidote for that yeah. And, and and yeah just super fun and wow fast when you only have to write half of it yeah. so yeah it, well, it, also it by the time we were done we had like a second draft which helps yeah because yeah. we were editing each other yeah. it was basically a second right. finished draft by the time we actually turned it into our editor so that yeah. was nice right. and I was so. working on the wake of vulture series which is flipping tropes but a bit more kind of grim mm -hmm. and challenging and then right. also lady castle the comics series yeah. right. that's about you know what if strange women lying in ponds was a great basis for a system of government? So all the bones are in our work. Oh, yeah. We just put them together to uh, yeah. Wonder Twins activate puns. But it's sort of like comic relief for yourselves, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we, well, we kind of felt that maybe yeah. maybe the world was ready for some yeah. for some humor. Yeah, so we didn't want grim dark. We wanted kind of like the opposite of grim dark. Right, yeah. right. So editing each other, who's tougher? Well, I don't know. Yeah. Well, we we know we each have strengths and weaknesses. I'm very bad with like maps. And, and timelines, so Kevin fixes all of that for me, which I'm very grateful. He's like, homie, they can't go 900 miles in three in like three days. And I'm like, what if they they rode eagles? I don't, let's, you know, I <laughs> maybe they could. So yeah, Kevin fixes yeah. my all yeah. of my errors, yeah. which is nice. Yeah. And uh, Delilah is, is really good at uh, seeing character arcs and taking them places that I would never have thought of. So um, in, in developing them in, in ways that were completely, you know, right. out of my experience, and I loved it instantly. So, yeah, yeah. We're, we're very complimentary in a lot of ways. Yeah. And I love your map. 
in the front oh, of each you. book. Those, that's Kevin incredible. Drew that. yeah. He's I so could, good. I, it's fantastic. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I used to uh, be a graphic design major. Oh, uh, okay. You know, that makes very sense early then. on, and uh, yeah, and then I, I got out of that, but uh, I still have the old you know sketching skills. No, so. and I when I when I you read fantasy, I always love to look at maps of this. You know. yeah. So you know when you're we talk about you know the fantasy you both have written, you talk about that world building you know that you're doing. So uh, how did you do the world building on on this world of Pell? Because <laughs> it's a different kind of world to build, isn't it? Yeah. It is. Um, well, uh, part of it is just basic geography and geology world building, but yeah. um, we also wanted to mess around with some of the things you see on fantasy maps and uh, perhaps uh, in, in our own serious maps, you know, I right. wanted to put some illustrations on the margins of critters that were maybe actually kind of cute instead of terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. And so we have here be otters and they be super cute, you know, and yeah. you know, here's an yeah. island that's very mysterious, but it's got an incredibly long name. So um, yeah, because yeah. nobody ever goes there. So well, we, and the here we, there be dragons, but like no, literally <laughs> right here, <laughs> right here on this map. Yeah. 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 So stuff like that. We we just yeah, wanted to have fun with it. Yeah, words. Yeah, it's great. You know what? These books, when I was reading them, they really reminded me of. I love Terry Pratchett's the Reef, We Free Men series. I, I did, yeah. That, yeah. that that middle gray sort of up, you know, border on white. I love that series. And then there were some parts that reminded me a little bit of Christopher Moore. Oh yeah, he's the he's brilliant. We'll take. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. You got any more of those? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we take those all day. Yeah. No, but there's there's so many. I, I've seen read, read some other comparisons that people are talking about. Whether it's you know, I think it's very Monty Python-ish and, and different things like that. But talking about Terry Pratchett's Discworld and all that. So a lot of great compliments paid to to, to this series. Um, so is it easy to trust each other when you're collaborating? You trust each other? Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. I mean, it's because. we've. And Many each other's families. Yeah. I get to hold his dogs. Like, <laughs> yeah. if you let a person hold your pug, you're friends for life, basically. Oh, God. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, we, we've been friends for a long time. Uh, we actually met in Houston uh, at a, a signing for an anthology we worked on together uh -huh. called Carney Punk. And that's when I first met Delilah. That's when you were stuck with me. <laughs> but, but yes, uh, stuck in the best <laughs> sense of the word. Yeah. Um, we had put together an anthology and the publisher said, Delilah's on this project. And at that point, I had never heard of Delilah yet. She was a brand new writer. And I'm like, okay. And then I, I got to meet her and I was like, woo! And I really loved her story. Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah. and, and then, yes, friendship. Yay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So your characters, I think um, you have great main characters, but I think your secondary characters, you guys get real joy. We do. Out of flushing them out. Yeah. Whereas in a lot of stories, you don't really don't get that. I think that makes up a much fuller, richer story when you do that. So there were some characters that I absolutely love. Well, Gerd the Griffin was fantastic. And, um, well, I know that, you know, that uh, Ofi, it's Ophi, you pronounce it. Is it Ophi? Ophi? I think Ophi. we said Ophi. Ophi. Ophi, Ophi like and Ani. Uh, yeah, the, the twins. <laughs> yeah. I know they're more main characters. We should call them Innie and Audi. <laughs> <laughs> we should. <laughs> <laughs> but it, but in this story, who were some of your se favorite secondary characters? Oh, oh in in gnomes. In gnomes. I yeah. I, I love the uh, the yak, <laughs> like the the new. There's a there's like a so we we have the gnomes are they're builders they're mechanists they're steampunk guys and so like we have this city of, city of under things that they go to it's yeah. underground and they're like welcomed by this this uh, new that has been programmed to uh, be very boastful the will to boast yeah. will to boast yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's not a will to beast it's will to boast will to but boast. that's I yeah. love the characters like that where he's just like I did a really great introduction <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Little, little characters like that um, yeah. I. I really enjoyed um, sort of a, a quieter character who is the uh, proprietor of the dwarvish bathhouse, yeah. who gave the the dwarf yeah. main character quite a bit of, um, I, I guess, advice that he kind of needed to hear at that yeah. time, right. and, yeah. uh, and for his personal journey. So yeah. I kind of like doing that and in, in just noting that there are wise people scattered all over the world, and you never know when you're going to meet them. That's right. That's right. And I love the premise of the book because the gnomes, you know, the halflings are, are, are want to destroy certain parts of Pell, but they're they're alpaca riding <laughs> um, halflings with grenades and, yes. and a lot of other. Well, they stuff. also have very nicely like leather <laughs> satchels, like chased yeah, leathers, right, like that's right. you know. There's these vestiges uh -huh. of they were once fine artisans, but now they're like, or we could just ride alpacas and throw bombs at people. Yeah, yeah, makes yeah. total sense. Yeah, really. Does. Well, I've always thought you know yeah. if the if the halflings are so. Um, you know, 
they love their food and all that that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I thought that well, they they might have hunger for other things, and that right. might lead to crime. Uh, and, and so I, I thought that the seeds of of, uh, of a criminal lifestyle might be there in their original conception. Mm -hmm. And uh, what why don't we just run with that? And yeah. so that was a lot of fun. You know who else we haven't mentioned? Oh yeah, is the shader. Oh, that's right. Well, the Ovatar, the the uh, half sheep. Half, half woman. Right. Because uh, we've seen yes. like people with goat legs traditionally. Yes. We're like, what if it was like a sheep? So, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah we <laughs> did. got little fuzzy buns. Yeah. yeah. And fun little floppy sheep ears. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. She, she was a lot of fun, especially because she had, uh, she has a little bit of a kleptomania problem. Right. And uh, she also is quite insecure because she's been isolated for most of her life. And, well, and her parents are terrible. And her parents yeah. are awful, yeah. So yeah. She, she has uh, her own little growth yeah. to experience right. there in her interaction with this group. She never really figured, she doesn't figure out for a very long time that yeah. she's really a part of them. And she feels out, an outsider. And right. then when she finally figures it out and things click for her, that's that was wonderful, I think, for both of us. Yeah. You know, but that's that one moment. of those ones yeah. that's real fun, too, where we had her as a character, but we were like she wasn't quite clicking and fully three-dimensional and I, I, I wherever we were I'm sure that there was like an elaborate salt shaker on the table and we're like what if she just steals salt shakers like all the time <laughs> but, the, but see creating characters like that with those situations like this it's, it's just it's it's so relatable you know even though the character is is something that we would never see but is totally but you would relate to her situation her parents you know that she has she feels more isolated all those types of things you totally relate to it. so it brings those more those moments into it even though she's half woman half Sheep, right? Yeah, yeah. right. Um, so your puns, the jokes you throw in, and all, all the word plays, those must be so much fun just to play around with words and do these. Delilah is really brilliant at that, yeah. and, and I wind up laughing. Like, like I couldn't wait yeah. to get the new chapter from her because I would sit there you know, and, and giggle as I, as I read through the whole thing, and then my wife would come out and say, what are you laughing at? So yeah, it, and then uh, I would share with her. And so uh, we had the best time uh, doing those. And, and every time I got one that, that made Delilah laugh, I felt really proud of myself. So. Oh yeah, we have a lot of fun in the comments, like or, you're asking about our edits, but mo yeah. they're more like, oh my god, he, he, this is funny. Oh my god, I can't believe you did that. Like the comments were like that. I'm like, um, you split an infinitive here and you forgot that we were here. Like we're just giggling in the comments because it's so great because we trust each other. And yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's wonderful. So of, of the two books, and I know you're, you're you're almost done, or pretty much done with number three. Yeah, I think I have to yes. do the final, right. yep. the final red lines. So, so on don't tell trip. us one from the from the third book. But of the two books, can you remember one joke or one pun that has has been one of your favorites? <laughs> yes. Well, Go the, for it. well. Oh no, I guess my, the one that sticks in my mind the most is in the Prince of Spirits. So I, I've already already done the thing wrong. Um, <laughs> I already messed up. You, you think of one? Uh, in the second one, it might take me a second. You might have to edit this part. Okay. While I'm thinking of one. Okay. Um, let me see. Was um, it in my snacks? <laughs> oh, that was <laughs> it. Okay. So, yes, there is a scene where Delilah had slowly been building up to uh, uh, basically almost a Council of Elrond situation. And mm -hmm. uh, instead of Gimli saying at the end, and my ox, yeah. uh, we have this very uh, ebullient dwarf who instead says, and my snacks! And so uh, <laughs> it, 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 yeah. you have to realize yeah. that yeah, the, right. the build up there is, is, yeah. Uh, yeah. is chapters right. long yeah. and when it hits, oh my gosh. Yeah. That 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 slayed me. Well, you yeah. know, I think what, one thing that really set the tone for the whole series is when you wrote the first Gustav chapter, and you know we're writing like this, you know, kind of like Lord of the Rings, medieval fantasy, mm -hmm. kind of like European, you know, jerkin and hose, and and the goat just says y'all are intense. <laughs> <laughs> just like you know, you wouldn't say y'all in that, but it's just like yeah. it fit. And you're like, yeah, that's just that's Gustav. Yeah. I'm like, that's just how he talks. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why it's so much fun. You know, every, every paragraph is something to, to chuckle or laugh about. Um, you know, I was wondering about the audios that have been done um, that you can pull off online, but these books beg to be read out loud. Which With is somebody why who can Luke do wonderful Daniels voices. does it. Yeah. So tell us a little about how you guys were paired up with him, and because the audios really are fabulous. Yeah, Luke was doing all of my Iron Druid books, okay, and yeah. uh, as well as doing a Plague of Giants uh, for me. And I basically want Luke to do all my stuff, yeah, uh, because he is so talented with a, a bunch of different accents, and also his readings. He will take uh, his readings. By the way, are are often different from what I hear in my head, but that doesn't matter uh -huh. because of course. 
course, audio is a different sure. format, yeah. and and he is a, a very accomplished performer in his own right, of course. So when he delivers things, I wind up actually laughing at my own jokes because of his delivery, <laughs> yeah, right. and uh, because it's something that I, you know, yeah. uh, presented in a new way. So uh, we we got super fortunate that he was willing to do. Um, the Tales of Pell for us, and right, he does right. great. He actually got nominated for two different awards oh, uh, so for award? Kill the Farm Boy, oh, yeah, fantastic. for uh, audio, uh, uh, the audio awards the for, um, yeah, yeah. and then the in independent the indie Indies Indies choice, Indies yeah. choice, the yeah. Indies Choice Awards yeah. for yeah. Uh, best audio book yeah. of the year for Kill the Farm yeah. Boy. Yeah. Yes, I remember seeing that because I was. Which there and that's that's yeah. like that was nominated yeah. by by indie booksellers. So thank y'all yes. so much. Yes. Like that's it means so much. And I love the book covers as well. Oh. Aren't these amazing? Yeah. These yeah. are by uh, Craig Phillips. Craig Phillips, yes. Yeah. yes. And I saw gorgeous. the cover for the third book. Mm. So tell us a little bit about Princess Beard. <laughs> oh, the Princess it's Beard. It's coming out in October. It is. Yeah, so. yeah the, uh, the sleeping lady that we briefly encounter in Kill the Farm Boy mm -hmm. winds up being uh, the main character of the Princess Beard, the title okay. character, uh, because she wakes up. Uh, and then we get to find out uh, what she decides to do once she does wake up because it is certainly not fulfill any sort of sleeping beauty yeah. trope. Yeah. So. But that is part of the fun because we see this image yeah. in the Sleeping Beauty of like the beautiful girl yes. trapped in her youthfulness with her flowing hair that's perfectly brushed somehow right. and she's fine. And, and like ours wakes up with like, you know, fuzz on her teeth and her nails are all long and curly and her toenails are like, yeah. She's like, really, if, if, you're, if your hair is going to grow for years, right? and the beard, yes. <laughs> but um, yeah, like that's, that's what's going to yeah, happen if you're yeah. asleep all that time. Yeah. You're going to wake up super gross. <laughs> exactly. Well, how lucky we get two new books in the same year. That's great. Yeah. So, I end these interviews with a little quiz, so I'm going to ask each of you the question and just whatever comes to mind first, okay? So it's mostly about books, okay? Okay, what was your favorite book as a child? Oh my gosh, uh, yeah. uh, motor, The Mouse and the Motorcycle. Oh, okay. Watership Down. Watership Down. Okay, favorite fairy tale? The Nightingale. I can't remember any. Seriously, a fairy tale? Yeah. I, you know, I, I, I really did not like fairies. Okay. So therefore I made, you know, I, I, I basically thought fairies were dangerous, the original Irish oh. conception of them. Yeah. So fairy tales were not things that I wanted to remember. <laughs> that's, okay. That's been so okay, that's a good answer. Okay, how about a book you've been an evangelist for that you could not tell enough people to read it? The City of Brass by S.A. Chakravorty. Oh, yeah. Oh man, um, I, I'm a big enthusiast for Deanna Rayburn. Um, she writes the okay. Veronica Speedwell mysteries, and the, I think the Lady Lady Grey. But Deanna Rayburn, everything she writes, that's like my my auto buy, auto love. I love everything she does. Okay, all right. How about a book you faked reading? Faked reading? Yeah, we've all done it. Somebody says they. Moby Dick. It. Yeah, I've heard that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Almost anything. Like I don't. The the biz about the men having all of the feelings. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I haven't read Moby Dick either, but we did kind of use it to start off the Princess Beard. Okay. A little bit. Okay. Because yeah. right. it's a salty sea tale. Yes. Okay. If you could have dinner with three authors and yourself, alive or dead, what would those, who would those three be? Deanna Rayburn. Oh, she's lovely. Yeah. yeah. And Chuck. Yeah. I'd want to hang out with Chuck some. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. Um, let's see. Who else? There's so many. I know. Right. Uh, well, we're, so, we're so fortunate that we've gotten to yeah. meet. Like we, we've had dinner with Charlene Harris and Rachel yeah, okay. Kane. Like we, we, yeah. we yeah. know these people. Well, there and you go. You got it right there. Yeah, it, it was wonderful to, to hang yeah. out with them. Yeah, yeah for okay, sure. And I'll be under the table just listening. Okay. All right. And the favorite character you've ever created in any of your books? Oh boy, um, I think that it would have to be the widow McDonough. Um, the the. Uh, the old lady who uh, uh, is sort of a neighbor of Atticus okay. in the Iron Druid Chronicles. Okay. All right. And Delilah? I, I mean, you might have to go all the way back to my very first book. Yeah. Hermione Stain from Wicked As They Come was the first character that really came to me strongly with a voice right out of the, right out okay. of the, the stable. Okay. And what are you reading now? Oh my gosh. Um, right now, I am reading, uh, I am reading uh, Bitter Spirits by Jen Bennett mm -hmm. and a book called The Romantics that I found on Amazon. Oh, oh. Um, Tara Conklin, right? I think so, yes. Yeah, right. um, okay. And Kevin? Right now I'm reading Tiamat's Wrath by James S.A. Corey. Okay. Yay, James S.A. Corey! Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, 100%. Oh, can, we, can we introduce you to someone very quickly? Okay. This is our friend Norbert. <laughs> Last year when we came, we had a little black knitted Gustav. And he was our mascot. And this year we have Norbert. Okay. Uh, yeah. He was knitted by my friend Kathy. So, like, 
Hey, Norbert. Hi. Norbert wants to come see you. <laughs> We're glad to be here. Great conversation with Kevin Hearn and Delilah Dawson about their series. It is called The Tales of Pell. The first one was called Kill the Farm Boy, and the second one, No Country for Old Gnomes. If you want to read a page turning fun adventure that will keep you laughing all the way through, you've got to read these. Thanks for joining me on Authors Reveal.